Good morning, fellow tech masters. As you can probably see by the image, I'm not sure if you can quite see kind of the lights there, but I'm not talking about a tripod for a camera, I'm talking about a tripod for a dog. As you can see, Tori is missing her hind leg there. So, some of you know, because I've mentioned it before, well, probably all of you know that I have two dogs, and that, uh, they're basically part of my family. I've given speeches about them, and they've been the topic of many of the stories I've given in presentations. This particular dog, Tori, she's a 12-year-old American Staffer Dyer Terrier, Pitbull. She's evil and mean and all that good stuff. Uh, she's what's our first dog, and she's been a, a, a family member for years. And to kind of illustrate that a little bit of history about her, you can see she's got one leg left in the back. But early on, that leg that is still there, she had a knee replacement. She tore her ligaments in her knee, and we had to go through an operation when she was five to replace it. Pretty painful surgery, pretty difficult surgery. Rehab was awful. It was about six weeks of a cast, no mobility. And from there, we had to kind of help her start walking on the leg again. The downside, or the upside about that surgery is you're guaranteed that the knee will never break again because it's a mechanical knee, it's titanium, it's strong. The downside is, is because while they're healing, they're favoring the other leg, 90% of the dogs have to have it again on the other leg to get the advantage of that. Sure enough, two years later, the leg that's missing, we've had to do the same, the same surgery. So about, just about four months ago, Chori was running around and she kind of was not putting weight on that leg, limping a little bit, and I'm like, oh, great, what now, you know, got her glucosamine, kind of tried to limit her mobility a little bit, but it never really got better. Sometimes she would walk on it, sometimes she would just, like, limp and it would hang. So I brought her to the vet, expecting that, you know, maybe it's a little swollen, maybe they have to pull some of the metal out of her leg, because I think that would happen. But unfortunately for us, when the vet walked back in, you know, she had this look on her face, and, you know, she knows how important she is. That I'm sorry to say your dog has osteosarcoma, meaning she has bone cancer in one of her legs. Now, it turns out that 1% of the dogs that have those operations on the knees actually get osteosarcoma because of the parts of the leg, the body starts to reject it and they form tumors. So, wife is just about to give birth, really attached to this dog, starts crying, crying in, the, in the bedroom, and we're like, I remember probably asked her, you know, how long do we have? Are we talking months, years? And she's like, it's more like weeks than months. She said it's, you know, it's a serious aggressive cancer. And usually by the time we've diagnosed it, it's already metastasized in the lung. So they did lung x-rays, and they found out, well, it hadn't spread. So they said, okay, what are our options? She's 12 years old. I probably got two, three good years left, maybe. Maybe, if she's lucky. Turns out the only option, the only treatment course for this is amputation. And even with amputation, only 10% of the dogs that get it will survive a year. Because it's not to cure the cancer, it's to reduce the pain. Uh, osteosarcoma ends up being the most painful pain for dogs because the bones actually explode from the inside. Which means our, our little Shory was in, in horrible, horrible pain that we didn't even know until we saw the limp like her attitude was fine. You know? So we had to make a decision. Do we put the dog surgery. Right? We'd already done two knee surgeries, they were horrible, the recovery was bad. It wasn't sure she could manage, wasn't sure she could, she could survive. But the doctors assured us that this is not a tough surgery for dogs. That they are already used to walking on just three legs because they're not putting weight on that leg. It's bad. And you know, dogs don't care what they look like. They just don't care. So they assured us that the sur this particular surgery would be a lot less rehab than any surgery she had. So we had to think about it, you know, like I said, my wife was just ready to pop out her kid, and I just like the thought of her, you know, maybe the postpartum and kicking in and losing the dog. It was such a hard choice, but we decided to do it. So the day after our baby was born, I drove home at six in the morning, got the dog, brought it over to Blue Pearl in Eden Prairie, where they started the surgery. Um, Blue Pearl is uh, Cancer Center in Eden Prairie, they specialize on just cancer. It's awesome. It's the greatest place to live. You get better treatment there for your pet than you would if you were actually a man. It's amazing what they do. So they assured me, you know, we're going to take her leg, and the next day you'll take her home, and everything will be fine. And I was like, well, I, I dropped her off. It was the hardest thing, like leaving, knowing that I'm going to come back and totally maim my dog, right? It's just going to be 
it was horrible getting these masks. So I go home, I go back to the hospital, I get a call uh, three hours later saying surgery went fine, so he's up and walking, she's already going to the bathroom by herself. Right? So she's like, pick her up tomorrow, I want to keep her the night just in case there's any complications with the epidural that they gave her. And fine. So I went there the next day, I brought my mom with because obviously my wife couldn't come and I thought I would need help assisting her in the truck and getting her back home. We walk in and I'm sitting in the little post op room waiting for the doctor to come in. And about five minutes go by. I'm super nervous. Oh, I don't know if I can see this. I don't know if I can see this. And all of a sudden I hear, don't, 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 don't. Dog runs into the room with this big giant cone on, and she smashes the cone against the door. It's a big, big cone. She's not used to a cone. She skids like this, you know, slips on, little, on her side, slides across, jumps up, gives me and my mom both kisses, no leg, you know, just a little stitch here. It looked pretty much like that, except for it was a little bit red, and you could see the sutures. So, Talking to them, everything's fine. They they took apart the leg. They didn't see any additional tumor spread. They did additional blood work that looked good, and everything was great. And so I was like, okay, well, what do we do now? We bring her home. We're like, oh, just keep her contained. No stairs for a week. That was the only requirement. I'm like, well, can she go to the bathroom? I'm like, yep, just let her out. Just don't let her take off to the doorbell. You know, give her a little bit of rest for a week. So I'm like, okay, we grab her. We walk up to our car. I open my trunk for my Back, and I go down and pick her up, and boom, she jumps right into the car. I'm just like, I mean, it was like nothing happened. We got home, and we kept her in a little room for about a week, you know, where she could see us. We had this little divider in, in our room. And as soon as we took that up, I mean, she was fine. She's going up and down the stairs. And Paul, you saw her running around the yard, and everything just went fine. So. Prognosis is still not good for us. We get blood work every day or every, once a month for her, and we still have to bring her once a month to get to check, uh, checked up. And if we can get past the first year, we're already at four months now. If we can get past the first year, there's a good chance that she will have eaten it completely and just live out the full. We did have to do chemotherapy, which a lot of people aren't really sure about, but our doctors really recommended it was inject, injectable chemotherapy. And we had to do four different treatments, but we're done with that now. So now we're just waiting and getting checked, hoping that she survives. So, building the tripod, not as hard as I thought. I thought it would be just an awful thing. Dogs are awesome, they can survive things that humans suffer with greatly. So, with that, I'm getting ready right here. So, I'll turn it back over to our Toastmaster.